because you know how when you're using CSS frameworks, you have to add little classes in like MD hyphen table or something or yes, yes. Uh, BTN hyphen LG or whatever. Yep, for the button. I, I figured, what if you had a framework that just made you write ordinary HTML with no classes, you know, and it just made it beautiful? Then there would be nothing to teach. How cool is that? Nothing uh, to teach. So it would, you are going to put the CSS on the element itself. No, no, not on the element itself. So let's imagine you're building um, a form, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you did a form opening tag, then a little form label, then a text field, maybe a text area. Yep. Little submit button and a form close. You look at that in the browser, how's it going to look? If you've got uh, no classes or no, anything. Yeah, yeah, it will look like really ugly just sitting there. It'll look horrible, right? Yeah. So the idea with Trongate CSS, which is a CSS library that we've got, the idea with that is what if we make it so that people can do a basic form with no classes or anything or a basic table? So the table opening, instead of it being table, class equals table, it's going to be table that's yeah. it just on Nothing that table else. itself so exactly yeah. the form is going to be just form you know and everything just looks beautiful out of the box but here's the key point and this cannot be stressed enough um it's good to use things like bootstrap and whatever you're into materialize and skeleton and tailwind or who knows what if you're into that type of stuff, use it, enjoy it. In fact, just the other day, Gavin, who's a friend of mine, joins us sometimes on the live stream I have, he uploaded 19 bootstrap templates to the Trongate app store. By the way, Trongate has its own ecosystem mm -hmm. that is, I like to think, the first credible alternative to packages. So we had somebody upload 19 design templates that all use bootstrap and that's great if you like all of that stuff use it and enjoy it but the framework itself should be able to exist on its own without depending on any third party javascript or css do you know mm. what i mean but in any event i found one that i really liked and it was actually a layout library and I contacted the guy and I says, I love your CSS framework. I've done a whole bunch of videos. I'm using it everywhere. It's fantastic. I, I don't know how I'd maybe recorded 50 or 60 videos using mm -hmm. this CSS thing. And I says, this is great. And you know what the guy said to me? Wait until you see the next version. It's coming out in two weeks time. <laughs> Especially if it breaks. <laughs> because... They're either going to... Do you know what's funny, right? I, like, as a framework maker, I am highly incentivized to say, we're using blankety-blank.css. Do you realize how easy it is for me to say that? Think of the benefits. I mean, the moment any framework maker says, we use blankety-blank.css, suddenly... We've got that community, the CSS one, mm -hmm. all tweeting and everything, saying, hey, look, such and such likes us. And again, I'm not bashing Laravel today. But if you take, for example, um, a few years ago, the maker of Laravel tweeted out, uh, I had a look at Vue.js. It's really good. And then oh, yes, it moved yes. on to Laravel's using Vue. And what did the Vue community do? They all said, hey, we're all loving Laravel and they love us. So yes. they all had a big love fest where they all cross promote and everybody suddenly has access to everybody's uh, audience and it's all beautiful. And then Laravel did it again with Tailwind. Ah, yes, so now that's all, right. Now all the Tailwind people are going, oh, Laravel's great and everything. Dude, the dude who made Laravel is a marketing genius, in my opinion. Oh, yes, and yes. Yeah, the, the dude uh, is a, uh, a marketing genius, and a, any framework maker is highly incentivized to dig out something that looks great and say, "Hey, are you the Bulma CSS guy? I love your stuff, man. We're even using it." And of course, 
Balmer guy is going to tweet, blah, blah, blah. It takes a whole lot of work off of my own shoulders. And um, also, it relieves me of a whole lot of responsibility. Yeah, Being going centrist, with, um, what do you call, uh, how the, the latest trend, the latest um, feel, they're going to incorporate yeah. it. But as yeah. you can see, uh, I think you're seeing the community, a lot of people actually, I mean, in the grassroots, in the trees, you've noticed that e tree has been in the works for a long time, but hasn't come out because E2 is just so good. And E2 yeah. actually caused a lot of the entire drop of the popularity of E. E was among number one or two in PHP, but because of two coming in, it broke everything. But yeah. a lot of people see this, like you identified the right problem, that it is an insane number. Uh, I think it's uh, due to, you know, just the whole ecosystem these days that's just too easy with Composer to put new stuff inside. And it's yeah. just every single framework comes out. And I've seen it with Laravel, right? They suddenly wanted to do front end, back end, you know, with the, the front end, back end with the view. And I don't agree yeah. with that style. And then they, they, they alienated the monolithic group who still wanted to keep everything in one place. So now they have some split strategy. They have some JavaScript mm. that they're trying to put in there. So it's all gone. Uh, it's very, very confusing. They're rolling out new changes all the time. And it, you're not mm. seeing that those improvements. So at uh, Tron Gate, you're keeping everything. Are you using any third-party packages? <clears throat> None. Zero. 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 Uh, totally independent. This guy is self-sufficient. If, yeah. if GitHub goes down, you can just guarantee that you can still continue to use Tron Gate. Downloadable yeah. in a zip file, I, I assume. I think I saw, I remember. You can still get it in, in a zip file. Well, actually, it is on GitHub. Um, but I've got a bit of code that downloads straight from GitHub if you go to the website, you know? Yeah, but, but if it goes down, we can still pull it out yeah, from uh, yeah. the own zip. That, yeah, you know, yeah. has no but, dependencies. But, yeah, but just to be clear, I'm the world's biggest idiot because instead of cashing in and all of that, oh, he's using blankety-blank.css, um, I don't get any of that, you know? Because yeah, no. The, it took you, ages. <laughs> uh, I, but I like this idea. I think this is a long-term, like if you're building a project which you want to stay for about 10, 15 years and you don't want to worry the day, the, that fear, right? That 10 years later, you open up and you press the button on Composer and the errors are, uh, you know, three or four levels deep. And this yeah. is the, the framework for all of you guys, uh, Tron Gate. Uh, take me to, I noticed that you don't like migrations or ORMs. Why? I mean, I thought these were pretty good ideas. I like ORMs. I like migrations. Well, I think it actually doesn't matter too much in a funny type of a way. That I, I could go on and, well, if you want, I'll answer those things and we can gladly okay, have that just, conversation. Just a quick one. But, I had a, this thing about the migration, right? I always against, yeah. like when it first started, it was a bit thing, but when you're working in a team, you know, you, you add a column on your local and you want Bob to add one. You just say, you know, run your migration. So how, how yeah. does that work in Trongate? Like, do I have to call okay. you to do it? Okay. You and I could come up with a big giant list of things that I like and you like or that you like and I don't like, okay? Mm. We could add things like unit testing, for example. We could add a gazillion other things, okay? But all of these things are just the opinion of one guy and it's, my own personal opinion is kind of irrelevant. What I think is more relevant is that if somebody out there loves migrations or unit testing yeah. or yeah. insert thing, they should be able to get that thing at the click of a button from an app store. And that's exactly what TronGate does. So I'm not encouraging anyone to abandon anything. Okay. If you like migrations, God bless you. But we have an app store that took rather a long time to build. And it's... I don't know how many things there are right now, but there's quite a few. And it's only a matter of time before you see all of that stuff appearing. Take, for example, the, is it the grid system with you where you've got the tables and stuff? Um, you can edit the tables on the page. Oh, you uh, mean the grid view? Yes. Grid view, that's yeah, the thing. Comes out that, of the box. Right, that's an excellent feature. 
that's an excellent feature that TronGate does not have. I like your feature. Congratulations. But if I wanted that feature and I, and I like the feature, I think that I should be able to get it at the click of a button as an optional extra instead of being part of the framework. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying... I mean, we could have a conversation about why I personally am not a fan of insert thing. It would be a boring conversation, though, and I'm probably not going to convince anyone. So I think a much more interesting conversation is, wouldn't it be cool if you could have a functional framework that had no third-party libraries, that had industry-leading benchmarks, that was V1 forever, Mm -hmm. And if you wanted any of that other stuff, you can just get it at the click of a button. That's more interesting, I think, you know? Click, click oh, I like the, I mean, so this is the onion style like view. One problem that I, I come across with some of those frameworks, especially the, what we call the micro frameworks, is that out of the box is not enough. So I remember we used, uh, I tried out Slim and they didn't have any database interaction. You had to use Eloquent which to me was really stupid, you know? Yeah. Uh, Fat yeah. Free had, you know, some form of versions, but they were not, there's not enough. And um, there's not much cost to having a framework that's a little bit bigger that has some of these uh, extra stuff. So just, I guess it's a, it's a feel. Sometimes it's just too little, you know? You, 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 yeah, you, yeah. You, you, your, your house doesn't have enough heating. And not, so how, how do you make yeah. that choice when it's just too little? And, um, uh, you know, working in a team, it sounds easy for one person to click a button, but getting a team of three or four people to, to click buttons to add stuff is, is a bit more work. So do you think you might be a bit too bare bones? I, I don't no. see a problem adding anything or extra. It's just maybe a bit bare. I mean, to some yeah, of no. the critics out there, sure, sure. they're used to, you know, uh, Yi is one of the, I think, the least amount of things in a framework. You've got other mm. guys... Like, especially, um, we, we try not to talk about other PHP frameworks on my channel. We, we, we want peace. We can talk about other people's <laughs> language. Like, uh, some of these, uh, let me see. Like, okay, Ruby on Rails, right? It's jam-packed with, with yeah. features. Over bloated. Uh, but it, when something's missing, like, how do you know when is enough? And how do you tell these sure. people who, who have been using it and then they go to your framework and like, oh, you know, this is missing, that's missing, I, I don't have my this? Well, I'm glad you asked me. In the case of Trongate, we have a unique system, and here's my fancy phrase of the day, innovation through collaboration. So whenever there's an important decision to be made with the framework, we hold a vote. So to give you an example, recently... I was doing a, a web page actually during a live stream and I noticed that the YouTube iframes looked terrible because they were stuck at 560 or whatever it is when you embed them. Now you can fix that with a little bit of CSS about this much. And we took a vote. Should this be a part of the framework? And people voted and they said, yes, it should. So what a beautiful answer. The answer is the community decides through a voting system. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, I mean, the demand uh, of what people... Obviously, you will take into consideration not some crazy request like, you know... we want No, no, I, I'll respect the vote. Yeah. I will respect the vote, you know. At the, so far, we've had quite a few votes, but they haven't... They've, they've mostly taken place during a live stream, but mm -hmm. I'm in the process of formalizing that, and I will... Always respect the vote, even and, if it's And crazy. these um, requests will not break the framework. You will not have to upgrade to a version 2. They will always be incremental and within the, the, the framework. 100%. Stability is our main point. And just to go on to the thing about micro frameworks, anybody watching, you mentioned Slim. Go to YouTube, search for Slim Framework Tutorial. I'm probably in the top three. I've got one video that's got over 80,000 views where I teach Slim. I know all about Slim and the micro frameworks. And what you're saying is right. They give you a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, um, according to one of the guys who's involved in Slim, 
he said it's five times slower than if you just use pure PHP. There's, there's articles apologizing, well, one I can think of, for why this framework is so slow. And of course, the answer is because it uses PSR4 autoloading. Mm. If framework makers would stop using that, then Trongate becomes irrelevant. But Trongate, I like to think anyway, is the first credible alternative to all of that stuff. And it's not a micro framework. No. If we, if we, if we wrote a list of all of the features of any framework you care to mention and put it side by side with Trongate, I think we could give them a good run for their money in terms of what Trongate has out of the box. Oh yeah, certainly, certainly. Uh, for those people who are listening, um, that this is the Trongate is not a, even though it's really fast, it is not a micro framework. There's lots of uh, nice UI widgets, all within the fa- that no dependencies at all. Um, and it's gonna be. I mean, I think it's very functional to do everything that's required. There's some of this other stuff that you guys will be a bit used to, and I'm sure we're gonna get some questions and comments on that stuff. But all in all, really exciting down here. Uh, so um, we're coming into the end of the this section. It can't last for you know. I'm not uh, what do you call Joe Rogan, where it goes for hours and hours. But <laughs> really interesting uh, topic on here. I'm sure. The guy who's changing it, I love, the, one of the best thing, I think to anybody who's listening, something that stays version one forever. Now, a lot of people are going to criticize it. They go, well, oh, you're not taking, but think about all the breakages at, that happens every single time. If you're doing angle every, and just sometimes the incremental is just not enough. You know, especially certain frameworks, they, they've heard about this new feature and they're putting in and they say, guys, rewrite the whole thing. Go for 10 causes, relearn it, go for reskill. That is what happens. But Trongate, not going to happen. Forever golden, the same version. It's very stable. I think that's the, the whole idea. I think it's a huge oh. market for people who want to have a long-term project. You know, 10, 15 years, it's still looking as good as it is. And there's some of that. I think for one, one point of time, people said Code Uniter was that, you know? That didn't change for many, many years. Uh, mm. So that is the big advantage. Uh, as we end here, David, do you want to say your last one or two lines? Why Tron Gate? <clears throat> well, I think we've covered everything and thank you so much. But let me say something. You've given me an opportunity to talk about it. And I really, really appreciate that. And I just want to say thank you to you, the real tech lead <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> now we are here um as i said i love php and anyone who's bringing php back uh we're going to support them and if you've got a good idea i'm always a big believer right that minus the marketing the if you've got great software people are going to find out they're going to use it and people are going to tell everybody else and i've seen it happening i've seen it with Vue.js, right dwarfed no supporter by Facebook and uh, Google and people criticizing it. You know, just one man, Evan Yu, making that. And I think Tron Gates got that same idea. A great idea about stability, about not being in composer hell and dependency hell. Guys, if you ever use a project that uh, I've taken over uh, five years in the future that hasn't been updated and you press the composer, you can literally, is your, your, there's literally blood coming out of your screen with all the red uh, warnings there. You will want to look at Trongate. You will want to look at this stable framework, right? That has got everything inbuilt. It's a very exciting thing. Uh, we're going to end it down there. Thanks very much, David. And um, I look forward to uh, continuing this conversation as we jump onto his channel. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so. It's very simple.